Hi, welcome to Movie Short Flicks. Today I'm going to explain to you the film called Legion Warning. Spoiler ahead. Anyway, enjoy watching. It is early morning, two days before Christmas, when a man, appearing bloodied, falls from the sky. The man, Michael, takes off his clothes, and wings emerge from his back. He takes a large knife, cutting into his flesh, removing his wings. He screams in agony as a halo appears above his head, descending to a collar around his neck. As the halo wraps around his collar, it falls off. He breaks into a warehouse and starts mending his wounds. He then heads to a room full of guns, gathering large caliber firearms. A pair of police officers patrolling the neighborhood run into an explosion, and Michael emerges from the flames. The cops aim their guns at Michael, telling him to drop his bags. Their radio starts sounding off several emergency calls, and Michael hears it. He says it has begun, and there isn't much time. One of the cops approaches Michael, but Michael overpowers him. The other cop suddenly starts convulsing, his head moving unnaturally fast before stopping. The cop's eyes turn large and black, his teeth sharpen to spikes. He begins speaking in a disembodied voice, telling Michael he has disobeyed orders. Michael answers he's following his own orders, and the cop declares that Michael would die with the child. The cop starts shooting, but Michael dodges out of the way, shooting back. The cop falls, and Michael drives away, the lights shutting off as he goes by. A young man, Jeep, awakens early in the morning, and a young pregnant lady, Charlie, calls to him. They sit together, and Charlie asks Jeep if he's had another bad dream. Jeep says yes, and Charlie tells him he needs to worry less about his father. Jeep says the only thing he worries about is her, and Charlie teases him, saying he's concerned about a pregnant woman with a baby he isn't the father of. Charlie says the baby would have a new family in a month as she's not prepared to be a mother yet. Jeep offers to help her raise the child together, but Charlie tells him he needs to stop worrying about her. Later in the day, Bob, Jeep's father, opens up his diner and messes with the television to get better reception. A man with a hook hand, Percy, teases Bob. A rebellious young woman, Audrey, stands by the jukebox machine, and her mother, Sandra, expresses her distaste for the way Audrey is dressed. Sandra's husband, Howard, annoyed by Sandra's rant, tells Audrey what Sandra thinks, and Audrey snaps back with a sarcastic remark. Kyle, enjoying his drive, sees the nearest car services in 50 miles. He considers stopping at the diner. He sees a pregnant Charlie smoking, greeting her a Merry Christmas. He then asks for directions and realizes he's way off course. Charlie and Kyle then enter the diner, where an impatient Sandra hounds Howard about leaving. Kyle asks to use Bob's phone, and Howard asks Bob when their car would get fixed, saying they've waited too long. Bob checks on Jeep and sees he's not working on the car but is busy polishing a crib for Charlie's baby. Jeep walks out, and Bob goes after him, telling him he needs to stop chasing after Charlie. Jeep answers, saying he's been having terrible nightmares about Charlie, with horrible things happening to her over and over. He says he feels an overpowering sense to take care of Charlie. Bob thinks Jeep is making a mistake chasing after Charlie and thinks Jeep would be better off leaving the diner in search of a better life. Bob goes back into the diner and sees the television had lost reception again. He tries fixing it up, but he only gets an emergency broadcast signal. Percy checks his radio, and he hears the same thing from all frequencies. Everyone listens worriedly as the monotonous emergency broadcast ringing fills the diner. In Bob's office, Kyle finally connects a call with his ex-wife, saying he'd arrive the next day for their divorce signing. He demands to speak with his son, but the call cuts off. He tries redialing, but the phone lines are now dead. A frail older woman steps into the diner with a big smile on her face. Charlie takes her order, and the woman starts speaking with Sandra. Charlie serves the woman her order, and the woman asks Charlie about her baby. She asks about the father and asks Charlie how she would manage to raise the baby independently. Charlie says she can take care of herself, but the woman tells her the baby would burn. Charlie is taken aback, but the old woman repeats what she said, now with more profanity. Everyone in the diner hears this, and they all look at the old lady. Charlie storms away, and the woman happily devours her meal, now being swarmed by flies. She then says all babies are going to burn. Sandra tries talking to the woman, but the woman fires back, insulting Sandra. Howard gets up to speak to the old woman, but she bites his neck, taking a big chunk of flesh. Percy throws a frying pan at the woman, her neck cracking back, but she gets up as if unaffected. The woman then jumps up and starts crawling on the ceiling. Bob gets a shotgun and starts shooting at the woman. The woman slaps Bob away and Jeep gets the shotgun but hesitates to pull the trigger. The woman flies towards him, her feet sliding across the floor, the woman suddenly falls dead after Kyle shoots her several times. Everyone in the diner rushes to take care of Howard, who has now lost a considerable amount of blood. Kyle and Percy get Howard and his family to Kyle's car, and they start driving to the hospital. They run into what appears to be a cloud but is a massive swarm of locusts. Kyle's car returns and Bob meets them rushing back in and sees a massive swarm of locusts flying overhead, blocking out the sun. The men then take the old woman's body to throw it out and see a police car approaching. The police car stops, and Michael emerges. Bob aims the gun at Michael, telling him to stay away. Bob then explains the rationale for his behavior. 
Michael seems unfazed by Bob's story and realizes Bob and the rest have no clue what is happening to the world. Michael grabs the weapon from Bob, pointing it at Bob's head. Percy steps out, trying to resolve the confrontation. Michael considers the situation and tells them more people similar to the old woman would be arriving soon. He hands Bob back his shotgun and gives everyone a firearm, even Charlie, but he tells her to refrain from doing anything brave. They all head into the diner and barricade the doors. Night falls, and Michael leads the men to the roof to get a better vantage point of their enemy. They hear an ice cream truck approaching, and a tall, lanky man exits the ice cream truck. When he sees the men, he lets out a guttural screech before his limbs start stretching out. It charges at the men, and they start shooting until it dies. They see more cars approaching, and Michael orders them to shoot. The vehicles then stop, and the drivers all step out and start walking towards the diner. Michael orders them to keep firing, telling them the targets are no longer people. One of the attackers bursts in through the windows and starts dragging Howard away. Sandra, Audrey, and Charlie all dive in to help, but another attacker grabs Charlie, excited to see he's found her. Michael steps in, slicing the man's arm off. He shoots at the windows, and the attackers start backing away. Michael then grabs a frantic Sandra and tells her Howard is dead. Michael is disappointed in Charlie and reminds her not to do anything brave. The men head back down, and Bob demands an explanation for what's happening. Michael reveals to everyone that God has become angry and has ordered the extermination of the human race. He explains that the attackers they fought off are mere vessels possessed by angels. Everyone is in disbelief, saying they've never heard of angels doing such a thing. Jeep asks how Michael has such a vast knowledge regarding their enemy, and Michael reveals that he used to be on the angel side. Bob interjects, saying the whole thing is preposterous and expressing his non-belief in God. Michael says God reciprocates Bob's feelings, also losing faith and belief in humans. Michael then says his sole purpose is to protect Charlie and her baby as her child is humanity's only hope for survival. Michael says he doesn't care what they believe in, but the fact remains that the attackers outside want them all dead, especially Charlie and her unborn child. Jeep chats with Michael, asking him his origin. Michael says he was a general in God's army and decided to defy God when God gave him an order he didn't believe in. Michael says God had lost faith, but he had not. Jeep asks Michael how he has maintained faith. Michael says that even though the world is filled with hatred and darkness, he still sees glimpses of hope in people who refuse to give up and surrender, people who do not bow in the face of loss, people like Jeep. Michael recalls his time back in the heavens, the moment he was given the order he defied. Gabriel tells Michael that humans have brought judgment on themselves. Michael says it an angel's duty to guide humans, but Gabriel says it is their higher duty to obey the Almighty. Michael knows that he is right within his heart, as God made his heart with all of God's love, but Gabriel says Michael is too late, as the other to exterminate the humans have been given. Michael watches as scores of angels fill the skies. Sandra wakes up the following day hearing a strange noise. She walks to the back of the diner, hearing Howard sobs. She peeks through the back door and sees Howard crucified upside down, full of boils, calling for her help. Kyle and Audrey are unsuccessful at keeping her inside and she runs out. Sandra nears Howard but Howard bursts, spewing out acid. Percy gets to Sandra in the nick of time, shielding her from the blast. Percy carries her back to the diner before collapsing to the floor. Percy's back had been scalded clean to the bone. Sandra is tied to a chair while Audrey tries to feed her. Sandra then blames Audrey for everything happening to them, telling Audrey she has ruined everything. Later, Audrey switches through radio stations until she hits a frequency with someone broadcasting. The broadcast speaks of several pockets of survivors fighting back the possessed, but Michael says they can't risk leaving as it would only make Charlie an easier target. Charlie later chats with Jeep, remembering when she almost had the baby aborted before backing out at the last minute. She believed she could go back whenever she wanted, but it got to a point where the doctor could no longer perform the abortion, and she ended up stuck with the baby. This then led to her hating the child. The lights turn back on, and a car arrives at the diner, trying to get a gas refill. Kyle and Audrey prepare to shoot, but they see it's a father with his son. A gang of troublemakers then show up, running the dad over and taking the kid. Kyle jumps down to help the kid, shooting at the men. He gets to the kid and starts carrying him back. Bob removes the barricade, eager to help, but Michael aims the gun at him and threatens to shoot if he continues. Outside, the kid is revealed to be another possessed person as it bites down Kyle's neck. Audrey then jumps down to help but runs out of bullets and starts getting swarmed. Charlie decides to take matters into her own hands when she sees Michael isn't helping. Not wanting to bring harm to Charlie, Michael agrees to retrieve Audrey. Michael steps out and makes quick work of the attackers, using the gasoline pump as a flamethrower. He then takes Audrey, and they run back into the diner, barely escaping the explosion. Charlie runs to get water but sees the kid is made into the diner. The kid comes at her with a knife, but Charlie manages to shield herself until the kid's knife slips and slices off his fingers. Charlie kicks the kid away, and the lights go out again. The kid suddenly grabs Bob, but Michael pulls him away, and Jeep shoots the possessed kid. Unfortunately, the stress has gotten to Charlie, and she goes into labor. Charlie begins giving birth, and they hear a loud continuous horn blasting from the skies. Jeep and Bob are on the roof and see the horde of possessed awaiting them. Charlie keeps pushing until the cries of an infant echo through the silence. 
Audrey shows the infant to Sandra, but Sandra is trying to find a way to break free of her restraints. Charlie asks if they are safe, and Michael says no, but now, at least, the child would have a chance to live and lead humanity. The possessed hear the infant's wails, and start crying too. The horn blasts again, and a winged creature appears to be descending from the sky. Michael says God had sent down Gabriel, to finish the mission that had initially been given to Michael. Jeep realizes that the order Michael disobeyed must have been the order to prevent the child from being born. Charlie demands an explanation, and Michael admits that he was indeed tasked with eliminating the baby. But he also reveals that the baby was never supposed to be born. The future has now been unwritten, and the will of God had changed. Charlie takes the baby from Audrey, but Sandra snatches it away. Sandra intends to give the baby over to the possessed so that they'd leave them alone. Gabriel nears, and the horns get louder. The doors burst open, and Michael shoots Sandra. Jeep dives to catch the baby but comes face to face with Gabriel. Gabriel then smites Jeep with his mace, but Jeep rolls away. Bob tries shooting Gabriel, but Gabriel is too fast, using his wings as shields. Gabriel then slices through Bob's stomach. Michael stops Jeep from helping, telling him he must leave with Charlie to keep the baby safe by following the instructions. Michael, Audrey, and Charlie slowly make their way to the police car, and all the possessed stop and let them pass. Gabriel calls Michael God's rebellious son, and Michael points out how Gabriel had always been the one eager to please their father. Gabriel is surprised to see Michael without wings and tells him his disobedience will be punished. Michael says what happens to him is irrelevant as the child had already been born. Michael asks Gabriel for a truce, but Gabriel rejects, saying there's no other way. The two then prepare to fight as Jeeps drives away, headed for the settlement they heard on the radio. Michael uses his guns, shooting at Gabriel, and Gabriel begins thrashing and moving about, trying to hit Michael. Gabriel wounds Michael using his wings, but Michael gets behind Gabriel, choking him into submission. Gabriel then takes his mace and stabs Michael. Michael falls to the ground, and Gabriel sheds a tear as he watches his brother die. Michael then illuminates before disintegrating. As Jeep drives, he notices markings appearing on his forearm and understands these are the instructions Michael was pertaining to. Gabriel finds Bob still alive, but Bob had been releasing gas, letting it fill the room before igniting it with his lighter. Gabriel flies away, but a massive fireball engulfs the diner along with the possessed outside. Jeep, Charlie, and Audrey think they've escaped when Gabriel smashes into them. Gabriel grabs hold of their car, and he almost gets a hold of the baby. Jeep accelerates, and Audrey grabs hold of Gabriel. Audrey shouts for Jeep to step on the brakes, and he does so, launching Audrey and Gabriel forward. The car then crashes into a ditch. The baby and Charlie miraculously survive, and Jeep leads them up a mountain. Gabriel then appears, cornering Charlie, but Jeep dives into Gabriel, pushing both of them off a cliff. Gabriel prepares to strike down Jeep, but Michael appears, saving Jeep. Gabriel can't believe his eyes, as Michael had openly disobeyed their creator but had once again been granted eternal life. Michael then boasts, as only Gabriel gave God what he wanted, but Michael gave God what he needed. Gabriel tries to strike Michael, but Michael is too fast, slicing through Gabriel before he notices. Michael then spares a defeated Gabriel. Michael departs, telling Jeep he is the true protector. Jeep asks if they'll meet again, and Michael says to keep his faith alive. Jeep and Charlie then find the surviving settlement and prepare themselves to raise humanity's last hope for survival. Smash the like button. Like you smash your mama's ass. Comment your reaction and don't be a bummer. For more videos, subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications. Anyway, thanks for watching. Goodbye.